August 24th, 2017, just past 11.38 a.m., and you are looking at a live image of the Falcon 9 vehicle at Vandenberg Air Force Base, awaiting liftoff with the Formosat 5 satellite just minutes from now. Good morning from SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. My name is Lauren Lyons, and I'm a system certification engineer here in our flight reliability department, and I'll be bringing you the updates for today's webcast. Now, liftoff is scheduled for 11.51 a.m. Pacific Time, 6.51 p.m. UTC, and we'll be launching the Formosat 5 satellite to low Earth orbit. We have a 40-minute launch window, but we're going to shoot for the very top of that window today. Now, our last launch from Bandy was the Iridium-2 mission back in June as part of that double header, so we're excited to launch again today from our West Coast pad, Space Launch Complex 4. screen on this beautiful shot of the vehicle, you can see the Falcon 9 rocket standing 70 meters tall or about 230 feet. It's taller than a 20-story building. Now it comes in two stages, stage one and stage two. Now stage two is the bottom two-thirds of the vehicle, which provides the initial thrust that Falcon needs in order to get through the lower atmosphere up to the edge of space at approximately 100 kilometers. Once it reaches that point, it'll separate from stage two and fly back down to the drone ship. Now as stage one is flying back, stage two is continuing on with its primary mission, and that's to deposit Formosat on the Earth orbit. It'll be flying at seven and a half kilometers per second. Now that's fast enough to get us to orbit. At the very, very top of the, of the vehicle, you'll see the 17-foot diameter payload fairing. That is a protective shell that encapsulates the Formosat 5 spacecraft, protecting it from loads and all the aerodynamic forces that it sees on ascent. The big white trust structure that's behind the rocket, that is our transporter erector. It comes with two major sub-assemblies. The first is the launch mount, that's at the very bottom. This is the base that the rocket is sitting on and provides connections to stage one. Now the second piece of the transporter erector, that is the strong back, that trust part. That vertical tower provides support and connections to stage two, to the fairing, and to the spacecraft. It has umbilicals for power, for power, for propellants, for gases, and hardline telemetry. Now at launch pad 39A at Cape Canaveral, Florida, you'll see the TE throwback at liftoff, right as the rocket is ascending. At Vandenberg, it's a bit different. What you're going to see is the TE, the transport director, it's going to retract prior to liftoff, about three minutes before launch, and it's going to lean back 77 and a half degrees. So listen in for that call out on the net. Quick status update, Falcon 9 is in the process of loading propellants. We started at about T minus one hour and the launch director held the go, no go pole at T minus 78 minutes. There are two types of fuel on, or two types of propellant on Falcon 9. The first is our fuel, that is a liquid kerosene, RP1. And the second is an oxidizer, that is very cold, densified liquid oxygen. Now fueling on stage two is complete and we're now topping off on stage one. Locks loading is in progress on both stage. We're pretty much done on stage one, closing that out. And on stage two, we're about 90% done. Now the next major event that's gonna happen in the countdown is the opening of the pre valves between stage one propellant tanks and the engines. And that allows us to chill in the turbo pumps prior to ignition. We're gonna have that call out at T minus seven minutes. The very top of the Falcon, we have our payload status. Oh, we have our payload uh, fairing, and inside we have our uh, Formosat 5 satellite. 
we're hearing from the customer that the payload is doing well, they're working no issues, and they're go for launch. The Western Range is saying we're good for launch, and the weather is looking great. Those upper altitude winds and the ground level winds are looking solid for launch. Formosat 5 is Taiwan's first locally designed satellite, which is tasked with collecting data for disaster evaluation and scientific research. The Formosat 5 satellite was designed by the National Space Organization, NSPO, and built by more than 50 domestic teams. It will continue the mission of the Formosat 2 satellite as a high-resolution optical remote sensing satellite. Formosat 5 is expected to conduct observations of over a observations over a five-year period, orbiting the Earth once every 100 minutes. Now, Falcon 9 will be launching Formosat 5 into a 720-kilometer high low Earth orbit. Just two minutes after reaching that final orbit and shutting down the second stage engine, we're going to deploy the satellite. So we don't have a long 40-minute coast here. Everything's going to be happening really fast, so make sure you stay tuned for that. NSPO, along with its partners, have put together an overview of the Formosat 5 integration test and launch campaign, so let's check that out now. For a quick recap of what's happened with the vehicle in the last several minutes, the vehicle tanks are pressed up with cold helium. Helium is our pressurant. The cradle arms, which hold the second stage, those have started opening on the transporter erector, and strong back retract has begun. At T minus five minutes, Falcon 9 went on internal power. That means it's running on its batteries and no longer through the power source of the ground through the TE. Now you're going to hear a call of Falcon 9 going into startup at T minus one minute. That's the point at which the operators will hand over control of Falcon 9 to the flight computer. Now we're hearing that Falcon 9 is ready for launch. The payload is go, weather is go, and the range is go at this time. So let's listen into those last couple of minutes of terminal count. Stage one lock secured. Stage two return manifold secured. Short memory charge is complete. Rock, LC on countdown one, verify range is green. This is the rock, range is green. Copy.
Stage 2 locks closed out. Falcon 9 is on internal power. M1D fuel bleed complete. Vehicles in self line. Stage one and stage two cars are going to FTS, please announce AFTS is ready for launch. AFTS is ready for launch. BC, verify Falcon 9's in startup. Falcon 9's in startup. Stage 1, LD, stage verify, 2, go for launch. LD, go for launch. Minus 30. Twenty. Falcon Knights configured for flight. Fifteen. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Put down the top of the Drop AVIRC and GMC. Proceed to procedure 3 out 1 7 0 for post launch flight operations. Stage 1 propulsion is not on. GC, please move to post launch pad operations and secure the pad on head net 8. Falcon 9 has lifted off from the Space Launch Complex 4 pad with the Formisat 5 spacecraft attached. In about 18 seconds, we're going to hit max Q, which is maximum dynamic aerodynamic pressure. That is the point at which the aerodynamic pressures on the vehicle are the highest in a second. About a minute, we're going to have three major events coming up in rapid succession. Main engine cutoff, that is where all nine engines on the first stage are going to shut down. Up next will be stage separation. That's the point at which stage one will separate from stage two. Stage one will fly down to the drone ship. Stage two will continue on to space. And from there, immediately after, we're going to see second engine start. That is going to be the ignition of the Merlin vacuum engine, which is the upper stage engine on stage two. In back engine chill has begun. It's looking really good. and MVAC has ignited. The Merlin vacuum engine has ignited. You can see stage one that coast. glow of the second stage engine. The grid fins to your left have just deployed. That's stage one on your left, stage two on your right.
Now in about five minutes, the first stage's entry burn is going to begin. That is where all, not, well, sorry, that's where three of the Falcon 9 engines are going to reignite and slow down the first stage as it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. If we don't slow down, we'll burn up on re-entry, so we have to slow the vehicle down. That's going to be about a 39-second burn. Stage two probably still not. We're hearing that stage two is nominal. Everything is looking good. The trajectory is looking good. Prop is nominal. So while stage one's entry burn is going to be burning, we're going to see the stage two main engine, the Merlin vacuum engine, is going to shut off. So that's all going to be happening at the same time, and you'll hopefully be able to see it on both screens. Now after, re after the entry burn, there's going to be about a 50-second period where there are no engines burning, and at which point after that concludes, the stage one landing burn is going to begin. That is where the center engine, E9, for Falcon 9's uh, first stage is going to reignite, and that is going to slow the vehicle down to zero velocity and hopefully put it in a position to land right up on Just Read the Instructions, our West Coast drone ship. Now, if we're successful here, this will be the 15th successful recovery of a Falcon 9 first stage. MVAC continues to be performing very well. Everything is nominal on stage two. just under about two minutes before that entry burn is going to begin on stage one. And again, during that entry burn, stage two's Merlin vacuum engine will shut down. And as we mentioned earlier, this is a really short webcast. This is a short flight. We're not going to have an extended duration coast. Only two minutes after Seco, after that uh, Merlin engine, that vacuum engine on stage two shuts down, only two minutes afterwards, we're going to deploy the Formosat 5 spacecraft onto orbit. We're just under a minute away from entry burn see the Earth getting closer and closer to us as Falcon 9 gets ready to come home. Stage 2, AMTS has saved.
coming up on that entry burn any minute, any second now. And the Merlin vacuum engine over to your right on stage two continues to perform beautifully. Stage one entry burn has started. That entry burn has started on stage one. It's going to last 39 seconds. And we have second engine cutoff over on stage two. And the entry burn appears to have ended on stage one. Stage one, entry burn, shut down. And we're getting confirmation that we have a good orbit for stage two. This is very good news. That is the primary mission, and getting to that orbit is the whole goal of today. Coming up in just under two minutes, we should see the deployment of the Formosat 5 spacecraft into low Earth orbit. Now the landing burn should be starting in about 35 seconds or so over to your left, so let's keep an eye out for that. That burn's going to last 33 seconds. Stage one is transonic, Church of AOS. That landing Stage burn one, has landing started. Burn started. You can see the drone ship in the view. Ah, uh, and it looks like we lost the camera feed. Oh, wait. There we go. Falcon 9 has landed. Falcon 9 has landed on This is the 15th successful landing of Falcon 9. Now there's still the main mission, payload deploy, coming up any second now. shot there. And with that, that brings Falcon 9's job to a close today and also signals the end of our webcast. Now to summarize events today, we had a successful first stage ascent and a successful first stage landing on Just Read the Instructions. Stage 2 did a great job today, dropped off Formats at 5 into a successful orbit on low Earth orbit, so great deployment. Uh, we'd like to thank our Formasat customer, the Air Force's 30th Space Wing, for providing Western Range support today, and the FAA for issuing our launch license. You can follow SpaceX on Twitter, Instagram, and visit our website at SpaceX.com to learn more about us and our mission. Thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you next time.